In this video, we're going to solve quadratic equations by factoring and using the zero product property. Now, before you watch this video, you need to already have a basic understanding of how to factor. We are going to factor using a strategy called grouping. Um, there's several different strategies for factoring, so if you're good with another strategy, you can just use that. But if you don't already know how to factor, you need to go back to a video on that first. So let's start by just talking about what the zero product property is. The zero product property is the idea that if I have two values that multiply, multiply to give me a product of zero, then either the first value is zero or the second is value is zero. Meaning, if I multiply these and get zero, there's no way to get a product of zero unless one of these two numbers that we multiplied was a zero itself. So if we come down to this first example and it says three times a is zero, well, we know that the only number a could be would be zero. So we don't have to do a lot of math there. We know the three is not a zero. Therefore, the a must be zero. Now, if we kind of extend that example to this second example down here, now it's not three times a. It's three times the binomial of 2x plus 1. So if three times some value is zero, we know that this value right here, this value of 2x plus 1, it's got to be a 0 by that 0 product property. There's nothing else you can multiply 3 by to get a product of 0. So I can set that factor equal to 0 and just solve it. I can subtract 1 from each side. Then I've got 2x equals negative 1. And then I can just divide by 2 on each side. And I end up with x is negative 1 half. So it's how we can solve that equation by using the zero product property. Let's look at this last one. Now this last one is interesting because it actually has two different factors. It has something times something which gives a zero. So if we reference back to our um, original, I guess, uh, property up here, it's like the A is this first binomial and the B is the second binomial. So if A times B is zero, then either the first value is zero or the second value is zero. So I could add three to each side of this first equation and solve it to get x is three. Or I could subtract eight from either side of this equation and solve to get x is negative eight. Now keep in mind, that doesn't mean that in the equation that, um, that this first x is a three and that second x is a negative eight. It means that if I were to put a three in for both of these, 3 minus 3 is 0, 3 plus 8 is 11, 0 times 11 is 0. Or, if I put negative 8 in for both x's, we would have negative 8 minus 3, so this would be a negative 11. We'd have negative 8 plus 8, which is 0. Negative 11 times 0 is 0. Therefore, both of these values of x satisfy this equation. They're both solutions to the equation. Now that we've kind of recapped how to use the zero product property, let's see it in action, okay? So we've got this quadratic equation, and, and you're going to learn if you haven't already, there's a bunch of different ways that we can solve quadratic equations. But in this one, we are going to start by factoring. Because once we factor and we rewrite this binomial as something times something, and if it's equal zero, we can just set each of those factors equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to start, um, I'm going to kind of go through this grouping strategy. Once again, you can factor this however you want. But I know that I want to break up this middle term. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, those numbers give me a 3x squared. The way I get the 3x squared is I multiply the first and the last terms. I want those same two numbers that when I add them to give me a negative 4x because once again, negative 4x is that middle term. So the first step is for me to come up with these numbers. I'm thinking of factors of 3 that add to negative 4. I know because they multiply to give me a positive, that either both of these numbers are positive or they're both negative. But I know that since they add up to be a negative, I know that both of the values must be negative, okay? And I'm thinking of my factors of 3. Um, I'm thinking that's going to be, the only factors of 3 are 1 and 3, so negative 1x and negative 3x are going to be what we use there. We can see that those satisfy both of our little two equations we set up. So that's how we're going to break up our middle term. We have 
x squared, but instead of negative 4x, we're going to write it as negative 1x minus 3x, and then we bring down our plus 3, and this is all equal to 0. So I kind of broke that middle term up with this process that we, that we did over here to the right. Now we do our grouping. I look at my first two terms and my second two terms, and I factor the GCF out of each. The GCF of my first two terms is an x, and if I factor it out or divide it out of each of those terms, it leaves me with x minus 1. The GCF of my next two terms is going to be a 3, but since this first term is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative 3. And once again, if I divide a negative 3 out of that, it's going to leave me with x. And if I divide a negative 3 out of that, it leaves me with a minus 1. And now we've got a common factor in both of these, so I'm going to factor that out to the front. That leaves me with x minus 1 was that common factor I factored out. And then x minus 3 is going to be in the other parentheses. And all this is equal to 0. Oh, let me be color-coded here. All this is equal to 0. So now, now look how we've rewritten it. We've taken this trinomial up here, and we've rewritten it as something times something. Now we can use that zero product property. I know that something times something is 0. Therefore, my first number must be 0, or my second number must be 0. So I can just solve these little equations. I'm going to add 1 to each side of that one and get that x is 1. And then I could add 3 to each side of this equation and get that x is 3. So there's two solutions to this equation up here. There's two values that we could put in for these x's that would give us 0 as a result. And so my solutions, and I'll write it in solution set notation, is 1, 3. Okay, so there's our first example. We're going to do one more example, and the video will be over, okay? Here's our second example. Now, hopefully you're already noticing uh, something that's different about this problem. Um, in the zero product property, it's, it's that. It says in the name. It's the zero product property, meaning that it only works. Let me make that a little bit more like a zero. It only works if this number over here is a zero, but we can see in this example, it's not a zero. We have some other stuff over here, so does that mean we're out of luck? Well, hopefully we can think like a mathematician. I might not have the right side of my equation equal to zero, but I can make it equal to zero. So what I can do is I can subtract 7x from each side of the equation, and then I've still got this negative 3 here, so I can add 3 to each side of the equation. Oops, I don't know why I said 4 there, because these two are, are not like terms. I can't combine those. So minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. Now look, now we've got a trinomial equal to 0. Now we can use our zero product property. So let's, let's start the factoring process. So I come over here to the right, and I always show this step. That's just me. If I'm looking for two numbers that when I multiply them, they give me 6x squared. And I get that 6x squared because it's the product of the first and the last terms. So I want these two numbers to multiply to give me 6x squared, but I want the same two numbers when I add them to give me that negative 7x. So something plus something is negative 7x. Okay. So my factors of 6, um, you know, I could do, this is almost like a little guess and check at this point. Factors of 6, the first ones I think of are 3 and 2, but there's not really any way to add or subtract 3 and 2 to get 7. So maybe I'll go with 6x and 1x. I know that they're either both going to be positive or both going to be negative because they give me a positive product, right? So either a positive times a positive is a positive or a negative times a negative is a positive. Um, but in this case, we know they're actually going to both be negatives because we need them to also add and give us this negative 7x right here. So we did all that work. All that work tells us is it allows us to break up our middle term. All that stuff we do over there on the side is just so we can break up that middle term into negative 6x and negative 1x. Now, I'm ready to group. So I look at my first two terms, those are a group. I look at my next two terms, those are a group. The GCF of these first two terms, I'm trying to look for what's in common. Well, it looks like there's a 2 in common with the coefficients and maybe an x in common with the variables. If I divide a 2x out of both those, it leaves me with x minus 3. I'm going to do the same thing with my second two numbers. I see that uh, there's not really anything in common, so that means that my GCF is really just a 1. 
And since this first number on the left is negative, I'm going to factor out a negative, which means I'm like dividing a negative 1 out of each of these. And when we're grouping, remember, if we've done our job correctly, these two parentheses should always end up being the same, okay? If, if those are not the same, we've messed up somewhere. But now I see I got my GCF. So I can factor that out to the front of the parentheses. So I divide out an x minus 3 out of both of those two big terms. And what I'm left with after I factor that out is 2x minus 1. I get the 2x from there and the minus 1 from there. Now look, we're finally, after all that work, we're ready for zero product property. So let me kind of come up here to where I've got some more space. And we will write that uh, x minus 3 times 2x minus 1 equals 0. And we know that if something times something is 0, here's the zero product property, that either that first number is 0 or that second number is 0. So let's just uh, use some inverse operations. I'm going to add 3 to each side to solve that equation. And then we can use some inverse operations over here. This is actually a little two-step equation. I have 2x equals 1. And then I can just divide by 2 on each side and get that x is 1 half. So this equation as well has two solutions. And that means our solution set, the two values of x that would make that equation two, true, are 3 and one half. So that's really all we've got. Just a quick reminder of, of what we learned. We learned that um, if, if something times something is zero, then either the first number is zero or the second number is zero. So we can use this fact to solve quadratics. A lot of times they'll give you something like this, and that's fine. You just got to move everything over to the same side of the equation so that it's equal to zero. Once it's equal to zero, you factor it using whatever strategy you want, and you end up here. When you've got it written as a factor times a factor is zero, you just set each factor equal to zero and solve, and that gives you your two solutions. There you go. I hope that was helpful.